So one of the key pillars of Tulsi Gabbard's platform is being anti-regime change uh, and anti-proxy war. Uh, she just doesn't believe in the fear mongering and the trillions of dollars that is spent as a result of the fear mongering for someone's oil war. Basically, that's really what it comes down to because of our loyalty to the petrodollar. Um, and if you really want to know how loyal we are to the petrodollar, we'll just ask Venezuela what happened last year when they decided to leave the petrodollar. Um, yeah, we're trying to stage a coup as we speak. So that's how important the petrodollar is to us. Um, so Tulsi, over the years, has probably drawn the same conclusion based off the patterns that we've seen, like many of us have. Um, but the warmongers will always continue to beat their drums. And Tulsi's experience on the morning Joe this morning was yet another example of that. Take a look people so in the United States. Which I think a lot of Americans would agree with you there. But again, going back to Assad, Assad is not an enemy. Is he an, ad is he an adversary mm. of the United States? We have to look to who poses a threat to the United States no, and no, the no, American I understand people. that, but there are a lot of people who don't pose a direct military threat to the United States who consider themselves to be adversaries of the United States. That, that Vladimir is... Putin poses uh, or considers uh, America to be an enemy. We consider Russia to be an adversary. I'm just asking, do you consider Assad to be an adversary of the United States. When I look at whether it's Syria or Turkey or Russia or China or other countries in the world, I look at what are their interests mm -hmm. and are their interests counter to our interests. So what would you say he is to the United States? If you cannot say that he's an adversary or an enemy, what is Assad to the U.S.? What is the word? Uh, you can describe it however you want to describe it. My, I want to know my, how you describe my it. My point is that whether it is Syria or any of these other countries, we need to look at how their interests are counter to or aligned with ours. Are, is, are interests aligned with ours? What are Assad's interests? Assad seems interested in the slaughter primarily of his own people, in part. I mean, how survival, does that line up? Survival, yes, <laughs> exactly. Well, he, he also and he seems uses, to be willing to go to great ends to do that. He also uses weapons of mass destruction on I mean, his adversary own people as well. I, just so I mean, we, we can talk about all these things. My point here is... Is it important you, to talk about these things? My, it's that he uses it's chemical important. weapons on his own people? Of course, of course. It's important to talk about how our military is being used, mm -hmm. what it is costing them, what it is costing the American people, and whether or not those missions, those objectives serve the security of the United States and the American people. <clears throat> um, as a veteran, I really can't stand when reporters, as a, of course, I'm a journalist, right? So I believe in journalistic integrity, but as a, so it irritates me when I see stuff like this, but as a veteran, I've seen what happens when you go fight an illegitimate war and come back. You're not the same because you know what you did was wrong. Oftentimes you're fighting what, what uh, Muhammad Ali said famously that you're basically you're fighting other poor people of color because make no mistake about it. When's the last time you've seen a war with other Anglo Europeans? Think about that. Hell, from 99% of the Cold War, at least on record, we never fired a bullet at a Russian, but we didn't have a problem firing bullets at Vietnamese people. We didn't have a problem firing bullets at Korean people. We didn't have a fi problem firing bullets in Iraq, Afghanistan, Iran, Starting to see a pattern here? We didn't have a problem bombing the hell out of Cambodia and Laos, but we rarely, if ever, have fired a bullet at an Anglo-European that we consider an adversary. And yet we have no problem destroying countries of people of color. And then when we do invade these countries with people of color, we oftentimes, as expected, uplift the white demographic while making sure that the black and brown people are segregated and oppressed. Cuba, Honduras, Venezuela, Brazil. This is the norm. So Tulsi is on the right track.
because you have to look at our history. Now, when they try to force her to say whether or not Assad's an adversary or an enemy, well, what is he? Um, he's a leader of another country. What does that matter to us? That's what he is. Understand what I mean by that. As we have no business there. We claimed it was for the people, right? We claimed it was to help those people. Then we claimed it was for ISIS. And then, like we have a 50, you know what? What was the main claim? What did she say about, what did she? Oh, he kills his own people. Isn't that what she said? That's what she said, right? Let's verify that claim. <clears throat> Now, I don't want you all, I'm not a military expert. I don't want people to believe that. And I know that my credibility may come because I clearly am very passionate about the movement for peace. So how about we go some to somebody whose nickname literally is emblematic of how psychotically addicted to he is to the madness of war and destruction. Let's go to the verbatim words of Mad Dog Mattis in his AP News report. Um, the U.S. has no evidence to confirm reports from aid groups and others that the Syrian government has used deadly chemical sarin on its citizens, Defense Secretary Jim Mattis said on Friday. We have other reports from Battlefield from people who claim it's been used, Mattis told reporters at the Pentagon. We do not have evidence of it. We're looking for evidence of it. He goes on to say that we're clear, since we're clearly dealing, dealing with Assad's regime that has used denial and deceit to hide their outlaw actions. Hmm. Now, those are Mattis's words. Those aren't my words. It was a cold blooded, stone cold killer. And he did say they're gonna keep looking. He did say they were going to keep looking, but um, it seems to me that this reporter that just in, a, in another segment was, hey, I know our standards here at MSNBC. I know our, he you're going to say something. I know our standards, first of all. And I saw your little your little tweet on Twitter where the guy commented his article under. If you don't recall, I just did a video talking about how they basically tried to to McCarthyist smear her again on MSNBC and Tulsi smacked that shit down and told the truth. And then they, the guy who wrote the really bad article from NBC comments under the video. So then the one, uh, Katie, uh, I can't remember. It's, it's, uh, I think it's Kate, Katie or Kaylee or something like that. She's kind of unimportant, but she goes under and says, did you see me defend your article? What the hell is that? So we're just going to ignore the New York Times report that verifies that you did, in fact, use someone who is totally incredulous, was discredited by the New York Times of all, like their establishment. But it's not about that, right? We know this by now. And if you don't know, now you know. So this same woman who was touting how MSNBC just has such strict and stringent journalistic standards, said that, without a doubt, Assad must be our enemy because he uses his weapons on his own people. Mind you, uh, we never hear any news reports about Bibi Netanyahu, despite the fact that he shot innocent people with sniper rifles. And those are supposedly his people, too, remember? But we don't... That, he, he isn't our adversary, though. He isn't our enemy, but Assad is... Even though we have clear proof that Bibi Netanyahu ordered a military strike on innocent people. And we just heard from Mad Dog Mattis himself that the sarin gas attacks never happened. And later on, by the way, in April, there was another report that was released where he once again said, we have no evidence that sarin gas or that sarin, sarin chemical attack took place. And then we before this, was confirmed by the way we just launched missiles right at syria we just pop, press the button and then we find out that there was no proof of any chemical attack by the way uh before this report came out because i just wanted to quote this one because this is coming from the insane 
warmongering psychopath saying this. Before this, the United Nations had already concluded that there was no sarin gas attack. Rand Paul already talked about the fact that the United Nations concluded that there was no sarin gas attack. But you want us to call Assad an enemy. You want Tulsi to call Assad an adversary. Why can't she just say Assad is a leader of another nation and we'll have to negotiate as time moves on and we'll figure out where our interests lie within those negotiations? I'm not sure why I have to call him an enemy or an adversary or a friend. Uh, he's a leader of another nation and I will engage him as such. What's the problem with that? I don't, I don't really see what the, and then they, you know, they go out, Putin hates us. Putin is, he considers us an enemy and we consider him an adversary. No, 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 no. We've made him an enemy because we're constantly meddling in the affairs of other nations. If I was Putin, I would probably be a little worried for my safety and my sovereignty as well, considering we spent billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars to lay troops and United States military personnel at the Eastern European borders. So wouldn't you be a little peeved too? See, this is McCarthyism. This is a, this is a this is Mac I know it's not Russia, but it's still McCarthyist. Let me explain to you why. Because this is what they did to Iran in the 1950s. This is what they did in Afghanistan in the 1950s and the 1960s. This is where the idea of radical Islam came from. Russia was the superpower that was the biggest threat to us. So we overthrew every single leader and we used the excuse that they were aligned with Russia. We called them all communists. And if you align with Russia in any way, even if it was for your own freaking protection, we liberated you. Tulsi knows her history. I'm glad Tulsi didn't bite because what she just quoted was a lie. What that reporter quoted was a bold faced lie. It was a lie about the leader of another nation that could easily have been disproven. It's been disproven by the same mainstream medias that is very rarely going to tell the truth about anything anyway, but sometimes they're kind of put in a position where they have to tell the truth because the very warmonger that are supposed to be lying, have to, they come out and say stuff like this. Granted, like I said, albeit this is February 2nd, 2018, when this report came out and it was already late. We already launched missiles, even though we had already been told that there was no proof. So Tulsi Gabbard handled that encounter perfectly. Do not make them create enemies for you out of nowhere. That's not how diplomacy works. They don't want peace. They want war. They're courting it. If that's not clear to you by now, really? What, what is that? What, what else do they have? We've destroyed Syria. We've destroyed it. We claim we went there for people. We didn't go there for the people. We bombed the, it's this, remember we said the same thing about Libya, right? Gaddafi's killing his own people. Have you noticed how old that excuse has gotten? Gaddafi's killing his own people. Maduro's killing his own people. Assad's killing his own people. Where's the proof? Well, look, what had happened was we had proof, or at least we thought we did. And then when we actually went to go find out, there was no proof, but I mean, we already launched the, 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 the missiles and killed their leaders and overthrew their government. So I guess we can just leave now because we got everything we needed. Sorry. I mean, we've at least we eventually admit that we never found proof. What happened when we killed Saddam? Iraq was left in shambles. ISIS was created. What happened when we killed Gaddafi? We now see slave trading in Libya, but we were supposedly there for the people. What happened when, well, actually, no, they they tried to kill Fidel, 
didn't work out how they thought. In Honduras, same situation. Honduras went to shit after they installed a right wing dictator. Tulsi, like I said, clearly knows her history. But these reports, this is this is dangerous stuff, people. It really is. And this, please share this. Because propaganda has real life consequences. They don't care. They're millionaires. They're never going to have to send a, their child to the military to be shot at. They're never going to be forced into the military for lack of health care. They don't give a damn about this nation, clearly, so they would never join the military for that. So these problems don't affect them. They're not brown. They're not Arab. They're not Desi. They're not Latin American. They're not poor. So they could care less about what happens to you and I and the people who get caught in between these, these wars for oil to enrich another old white guy. Thanks for watching that segment of Mikasa Sukasa. You can donate to our Patreon and keep helping the network grow by clicking on the link in the description below. And also make sure you join us at justinform.com. And finally, make sure you subscribe to us on Roku and be part of the very first independent news network on Roku TV. But more than anything else, always remember, find your balance. Peace.